Hello everyone, welcome to BA Consulting Pro. In today's episode, I am going to explain some tips and tricks to make the most out of your data wrangling experience in Power Query. This is the last episode of this series. So enough all the talking, let's get started. The very first comes that choose the right connector. Power Query offers a vast number of data connectors. These connectors range from the data sources such as text, CSV, and Excel files, to databases such as Microsoft SQL Server, and popular SSAS services such as Microsoft Dynamics 365 and Salesforce. If you don't see your data sources listed in the Get Data window, you can always use the ODBC or OLEDB connector to connect to your data source. Using the best connector for the task will provide you with the best experience and performance. For example, using the SQL Server connector instead of the ODBC connector when connecting to a SQL Server database not only provides you with a much better get data experience, but the SQL Server Connector also offers you features that can improve your experience and performance such as query folding. The next comes filter early. It's always recommended to filter your data in the early stages of your query or as early as possible. Some connectors will take advantage of your filters through query folding. It's also a best practice to filter out any data that isn't relevant for your case. This will let you better focus on your task at hand by only showing data that's relevant in the data preview section. You can use the auto filter menu that displays a distinct list of values found in your column to select the values that you want to keep or filter out. You can also use the search bar to help you find values in your column. Otherwise, you can also take advantage of the specific filters such as in the previous for a date date time or even date time zone column. These type specific filters can help you create a dynamic filter that will always receive data that's in the previous x number of seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, quarters or years as shown in the image on your screen. Next is use the correct data type. Some features in Power Query are contextual to the data type of the column selected. For example, when selecting a date column, the available options under the date and time column group in the add column menu will be available. But if the column doesn't have a data type set, then these options will be grayed out. A similar situation occurs for the type specific filters since they are specific to certain data types. If your column doesn't have the correct data type defined, these type specific filters won't be available. Next is explore your data. Before you start preparing your data and adding new transformation steps, we recommend that you enable the Power Query data profiling tools to easily discover information about your data. In my previous videos as well, I have explained the data profiling tools. These data profiling tools helps you better understand your data. The tools provide you with small visualizations that show you information on per column basis, such as column quality, column distribution, and column profile. Column quality provides a small bar chart and three indicators with the representation of how many values in the column fall under the categories of valid, error, or empty values. Column distribution provides a set of visual underneath the name of the column that showcase the frequency and distribution of the values in each of the columns. And lastly, column profile provides a more thorough view of your column and statistics associated to it. So that's how you can explore your data into Power Query. Next one is document your work. Microsoft always recommends that you document your queries by renaming or adding a description to your steps, queries, or groups as you see fit. 
while Power Query automatically creates a step name for you in the Applied Steps pane, you can also rename your steps or add a description to any of them. For example, if I want to write any step name based on my own criteria, I can do that. Just right click on your step and put your description over there. Next comes take a modular approach. So whenever we are writing queries, you have seen that there are many steps have been involved in the query. So rather than writing all the steps in one query, what you can do, you can divide it into two parts. You can right click any of the steps in between and then select extract previous. So it's going to divide this query into two different parts. As you can see on your screen, you could split this query into two at the merge with prices table step. That way it's easier to understand the steps that were applied to the sales query before the merge. And to do this operation, you right click the merge with prices table step and select the extract with previous option. You will then be prompted with a dialog to give a new query a name. This will effectively split your query into two queries. One query will have all the queries before the merge. The other query will have an initial step that will reference your new query and the rest of the steps that you had in your original query from the merge with prices table step downward. You could also leverage the use of query reference as you see fit. But it's a good idea to keep your queries at a level that doesn't seem daunting at first glance with so many steps. Next, we are going to discuss about create groups. A great way to keep your work organized is by leveraging the use of groups in the queries. The sole purpose of groups is to help you keep your work organized by serving a folder of your queries. You can create groups within groups should you ever need to. Moving queries across groups is as easy as drag and drop. Try to give your group a meaningful name that makes sense to you and your case. So that's why you can put all the similar queries in a one particular folder or in a group. Now let's discuss about the future proofing queries. Make sure that you create a query that won't have any issues during a future refresh is a top priority. There are several features in Power Query to make your query resilient to changes and able to refresh even when some components of your data source changes. It's a best practice to define the scope of your query as to what it should do and what it should account for in terms of structure, layout, column, names, data types, and any other component that you consider relevant to the scope. Some examples of transformation that can help you make your query resilient to the changes are, if your query has a dynamic number of rows with data, but a fixed number of rows that serve you as the footer that should be removed. You can use the remove bottom rows feature in Power Query for this kind of task. Secondly, if your query has a dynamic number of columns, but you only need to select specific column from your data set, then you can use the choose column feature. If your query has a dynamic number of columns and you need to unpivot only a subset of your columns, you can choose the unpivot only selected column feature. And lastly, if your query has a step that changes the data type of a column, but some cells yields errors as the value don't conform to the desired data type, you could remove the rows that yield error values. That's all you need to know for this future proofing queries. So always make sure that even there are something is changing at the data source side, still your query is not going to fail. Next comes the use of parameters. Always try to use the parameters wherever it's possible. So if you don't know how to create the parameters, you can refer other videos. However, it's quite simple, but always try to use the parameters so that you don't have to again and again hard code any values inside your Power Query. Lastly is create reusable functions. If you find yourself in a situation where you need to apply the same set of transformations to different queries or values, creating a Power Query custom function that can be used as many times as you need could be beneficial. 
A power query custom function is a mapping from a set of input values to a single output value and is created from native M functions and operators. For example, say you have multiple queries or values that require the same set of transformations. You could create a custom function that later could be invoked against the queries or values of your choice. This custom function would save you time and help you in mapping your set of transformations in central location, which can modify at any moment. I hope you liked today's video. If you have any question or concern, please do let us know in the comment section. And also, please don't forget to subscribe our channel, like the video and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos.